Hey, I'm Ivana Manley from Manley Labs, and today we're going to do a little how-to video about how to replace the power switch rod on your Massive Passive or Vox Box, or all the rods in your steel head with the new fiberglass rods. Now what happened was we were using another material called Garolite. We were using this for like 30 years, and then all of a sudden we discover Oh hell, this stuff like swells up and gets bigger in water or with humidity. So we've switched recently to a fiberglass rod, these white ones, that do not exhibit those hygroscopic properties. So first I'm going to take the lid off the steel head and we're going to get in there and see how easy it is to replace all the rods. Okay, so we've got the top lid of the steel head off at this moment. As you can see, when I was taking off the screws, we've got some of the shorter screws that go in the side here um, in these four positions. I, I think they're shorter so they don't try to hit anything, but anyway, I've kept them separate and remember where they go. All right, we're inside here. Now we can see these uh, Garolite rods they go from the very front of the unit. These are the brown ones. These are the ones that will grow big in humid climates. So we can see that they run all the way from the knob all the way to the back to this coupler. Okay, and there's, there's four here and there's a fifth one right here. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to undo the rod at the coupler here and just pull it all the way out. Then we'll replace them all. Okay, here we go with a, should be a 16th inch hex screwdriver. We're just going to take the one loose here. Okay, you don't have to take it all the way out. Some of the couplers you might encounter in a Vox box or Massive Passive, well, they might have a slotted screw, so then you'd want a little slotted screwdriver for that. But these ones that we're seeing here, we're just going to loosen the hex grub screw from each of these. Just loosen it. Don't have to take it out. Another thing you're observing here is see that red nail polish? That is, we use, we use that as like you would use Loctite. It's an anti-vibration thing, you know, so the screw doesn't just get all loose in transit and you you buy a new unit and everything's loose. So we, we commonly have nail polish or Loctite for inter internally. Um, we can dab this on uh, in assembly. Okay, now coming out here, see I've loosened all four of those. Wait, oh, let's loosen one more here. The fifth puppy here. All right. So at this point, now I can slide these all the way out. Now there's a panel bearing in here too, and that's also just, just bigger than quarter inch. So what we saw happening was this, this Garolite material, it's supposed to be a quarter inch stock rod. Well, sometimes like if you're near the beach or in the tropics, you know, it would swell and get really big and then it would bind up on the panel bearing. It's buried. You can't really see it here. It's, it's in, on the chassis itself. You can't see it through the faceplate, but it would bind up there. That's and that's where these knobs would get really hard to turn. So um, now these guys here in these tiny little knobs, these are probably an 050. Yeah, I need another tool for that. Um, some the power switch on your Vox box or your massive passive, those are going to use 16th inch hex uh, grub screws on the knob. So um, you'll need a 16th hex key for your box box or massive passive. This one I've got to go find an 050 key. Moment. Here we go. What's this one here? Oh yeah. Fortunately I've got one. Alright. So at this point, we can take off, oh, we can just loosen the knob. Okay, boom, knob's off. Here's the old shaft. Let's hope they sent me the right length. 
They did. Yay. I'm so happy. All right. So at this point, we are going to just thread that puppy through there. And it goes through a hole in the PC board. And it's lined up. It's a good alignment there. I dig it. We're going to push it all the way in. Make sure that that is nice and loose there so we can get that all the way in. Looks good to me. And then just test fitting this knob here. No, Yeah, there we go. So that's going to work out perfectly, right? All right, so at this point, 16th hex key for the back here. At this point, I can tighten that up all the way like that. If I want to put a little dab of nail polish on there to make sure it doesn't get loose again. Well, if I had a functioning nail polish bottle, I would do that. But anyway, if you had some nail polish at home, you could just put a little dab on the side of the grub screw, not in it. You don't want to block the hole where you access it. Anyway, sorry, today I don't have working nail polish, as you can see. All right, so that's on there secure. Then we need the 050 key, and we've got two little baby grub screws in the knob. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the knob all the way counterclockwise in order to do what? In order to pretend like the knob is all the way lined up to the zero as that. And then I'm gonna use my 050 hex key to tighten this up. Don't go crazy, you'll break something or scratch a faceplate. And then um, my other screw is right down here, so I've got to turn the knob. I'm going to assist it by turning in the back, just so I don't spin the knob while I'm trying to tighten it. And then I'm going to address this other guy here. All right, let's see. So I've got space away from the faceplate, so I don't want the knob touching the faceplate or I'll just wind up there. Uh, my alignment of the indicator looks good there. And I'm triple checking everything. Oh yeah, it looks great. And just a note on the steel head, the little knobs use an 050 hex key, but this big guy here uses a 16th hex key. So we'll want to take, take this knob off with the 16th hex key. Then I would go and do all the rest of them, of course. So that's as easy as it gets. It's so easy, like I like to say, even a girl can do it. That's a bad joke, sorry. Very simple and uh, it's easy to replace. So we're sorry we didn't realize that the Garolite rods grew bigger in humidity, but who knew until 2019. <laughs> you know, we're here in Southern California. It's super dry here, especially in the summer. Our humidity levels are nothing. You know, so look, here in California, I'm seeing 250. I'm seeing a quarter inch. Fiberglass rod, I'm also seeing quarter inch. But I know if you live in Singapore, this puppy's going to grow bigger. We've just recently learned that. All right, guys, that's how easy it is. And then don't forget to put the lid back on. Another helpful hint is... Uh, Make sure that you have this on a nice clean work surface. You have unplugged it. You're not gonna be touching all these things in here because sometimes the capacitors can store some extra voltage even while it's off. So you don't wanna be touching any of the printed circuit boards or anything like that. We're just gonna be dealing with the knob and this coupler back here, okay? And another thing you might ask like, why do we even have these stupid rods in here in the first place? Why don't we just, uh, put these switches over on the panel where they belong. Well, the reason is because the circuitry lives back here and it lives back here for a reason. In this case, it's because this is all the loading, the input loading switching. So we want that to live right near the input. We don't want to have to wire things all the way up to the faceplate and wire them all the way back. That would degrade the signal. So that's why these stupid Garolite rods are in here in the first place. In the power switches of the massive passive in the Vox box, 
it's also because the power transformer's in the back and we don't want to bring all the noisy AC up to the front panel and switch it and bring it all the way back. Because on the Vox box, remember, the EQ is very, it's sensitive and it's right up there in the front. Same with the Massive. So we want to keep all the noisy AC in the back of the unit. On the newest uh, Massive Passives with Manly Power, they use this power supply. This puppy has a remote turn-on capability, so we don't, we don't have to uh, bring noisy mains up to the faceplate. That's one advantage of this power supply. So, I'm Ivana Manley, and uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions at all, give us a holler through the service form on the website, and uh, my service team will be happy to help you.